Hello everyone. Let's solve one more problem. That is, a pre-stressed concrete beam of inverted T-section has the following dimensions. Rib or web 300 mm by 900 mm. Flange 600 mm by 300 mm. The beam is simply supported over a span of 15 meter. The beam is post tension with three cables. Each contains 12 wires of 7 mm dia. Placed at 150 mm from the soffit at mid span. If the initial pre-stress is 1 kilo Newton per mm square, calculate the maximum uniformly distributed load that it can carry if maximum compressive stress in concrete is limited to 15 MPa and tensile stress is limited to 1 MPa. Assume 15% loss of pre-stress. Um, uh, here the first thing is they have not given the figure. So by using these data we should uh, draw the uh, T section. So they are saying that for a web it is 300 by 900. Next it's for flange 600 is a width and depth is 300 mm. And about the um, beam it's about simply support uh, it is a simply supported beam having a span of 15 meter and the cable is they have given three cables each contain 12 wires inside uh, first of all it's a three cable inside each cable there is 12 wires and that wire is having a diameter of 7 mm so I have placed those cables here. Three cables each consist of 12 wires and each wire it is of 7 mm. It is placed at 150 mm from the soffit at mid span. From the soffit means the word soffit itself means bottom. From the bottom to the center of the cable this is important it is not above the cable it is exactly um, center of the cable to the center of the cable from the bottom it is at a distance of 150 mm initial pre-stress is 1 kilo newton per mm square uh, they have uh, given other in, uh, information that uh, calculate the maximum uniformly distributed load what is a load that is UDL load that beam is carrying we should calculate uh, that and using the following data that is compressive stress in concrete is 15 MPa tensile stress is 1 MPa using these stress values and the 15% loss how much will be the UDL value or load acting on the the simply supported beam of 15 meter we should calculate uh, so the this is a flange and the web and about this yt and yb i will let you know in further calculations so according to the data it is a simply supported beam carrying a udl so notation is it's a live load it's not a dead load so it is wq is a notation and the span is 15 meter when um, uh, we don't know how much load is acting but when this udl will be acting on the simply supported beam this beam tries to sag it will be sagging will be like this okay so when the beam undergoes sagging at the top portion it will be compression and at the bottom obviously it will be tension so according to uh, this uh, uh, it's a compression or tension it's a sagging or hagging uh, sorry hogging um, we should check that and according to that we will plot this 
variation so what they have given it's a compressive load uh, sorry compressive stress of 15 mpa has the compression is at the top i am writing 15 mpa at the top and has tension uh, tensile stresses 1 mpa and it is at the bottom so i am denoting it by f inferior equal to 1 mpa but while calculating um, uh, further things we should consider the sign see uh, in PSE always remember compression is denoted by positive tension is denoted by negative sign so compression positive f superior 15 mpa tension negative f inferior is 1 mpa this is a variation next let's start with the calculation uh, data given is initial free stress is 1 kilo newton per mm square uh, from kilo newton i have just converted it into newton so it will be 1000 newton per mm square and uh, loss of free stress is 15 percent first we should uh, calculate what is the area of the cable we have a three cable each consisting of 12 wires of 7 mm dia so we should consider that and we should calculate area of the cable so it is 3 cable into 12 number of wires into pi into d square uh, d square by 4 so here d is the dia so d is 7 square d square by 4 so 7 square by 4 equal to 1385.44 mm square this is the area of the cable all the three cable put together uh, the value is this much next pre-stressing force how much will be the pre-stressing force we should calculate so p equal to stress into area of the cable so stresses initial stress they have given 1000 newton per mm square copy down that into area of the cable is 1385.44 mm square so um, uh, the p value will be 1.385 into 10 power 6 newton next is a cross section area of the beam uh, see here don't get confused between the area of the cable and area of the beam uh, earlier we have calculated the area of the cable here we are calculating area of the beam uh, so area of the beam is this one this area area of the web and area of the flange area of the web is 300 by 900 plus the flange is uh, 300 by 600 so i have written that so the total area of the beam is uh, 450 into 10 power 3 mm square next is about the location of neutral axis that is i have written here i have drawn here see this dotted line whatever dotted line i have written this is a neutral axis we should find out on this whole system where will be this neutral axis lying so from the bottom how much will be the value from uh, so, uh, sorry from the bottom at what distance it is placed from the top at what distance it is placed we should calculate it by using this formula uh, so we know that uh, this formula is uh, this y bar is nothing but formula is uh, summation of small a into small y by capital A okay summation of or sigma a y by capital A so this small a stands for addition of all the members into its y okay um, so let's start with this y bar equal to see the one thing is i don't know um, um, from uh, like what will be the value of the neutral axis so generally i have first i have kept it as y bar uh, so uh, so let's start area of the first element the area of the first element is 300 by 
900 that is area into you please observe this this is the important part into i have written 900 by 2 plus 300 i will show you what is that 900 by 2 plus 300 i will uh, go from i will calculate from the bottom so don't get confused 300 is the depth of the flange so this is 300 and the centroid of this element is the total depth by 2 here for this element the total depth is 900 by 2 so 300 plus 900 by 2 for the first element next for the second element is plus 300 into 600 this is area of the second element flange into 300 by 2 you have seen that the depth of the flange is 300 so um, this depth by 2 will be the value whole divided by this is total area of the beam see here it is total area of the beam when you calculate this you will get y bar as 510 mm come back here i have clearly written has we have started the calculation taking the values from the bottom started measuring from the bottom whatever value we have got it is for yb okay center uh, distance of the neutral axis from the bottom is yb so from the bottom the neutral axis at is at the distance of 510 mm so how to calculate this remaining value that is the remaining height is 1690 how to do that is uh, get the total depth that is 900 plus 300 minus 510 will give you this yt value yt is nothing but from the top the neutral axis is at a distance of 690 mm y bar is over next is a calculation of ina that is moment of inertia of the neutral axis um, uh, how much will be the moment of inertia of the neutral axis is yes, uh, that can be calculated as 300 this is pd cube by 12 that is area of the rectangle bd cube uh, sorry <laughs> moment of inertia value for the rectangle that is bd cube by 12 um, we have considered a first element the first element width is 300 depth is 900 so moment of inertia of the rectangle is bd cube by 12 so b is 300 depth is 900 cube by 12 plus its area this is a moment of inertia i i value i formula or i value plus area of that rectangle 300 into 900 into uh, 690 minus 450 whole square 690 minus 450 th this is not into 2 this is whole square let me try to correct this yes this is whole square fine so uh, just see here how i have written the value that is 690 minus 450 i have changed the color and i have written a note here please read this centroid of the vertical element that is this vertical element how much will be the centroid of the at where will be the centroid of this element is at 450 that is total depth by 2 will be 450 for the horizontal element it is again you know the depth of the flange is 300 300 by 2 equal to 150 mm is a centroid of the uh, flange so this is how we get 450 and 150 here so how did i take this value is 
650 s you can see here from the top to the from the top uh, at what distance neutral axis is there it is at a distance of 690 690 minus 450 if i am going to consider from the bottom it is at a distance of 450 uh, sorry centroid is at a distance of centroid of this element c1 that i have denoted as c1 that is 450 means how much will be this value we will uh, get that uh, value so that value whole square plus this is for the horizontal element or for the flange the width of the flange is 600 depth is 300 cube by 12 bd cube by 12 moment of inertia even that is a rectangle so the moment of inertia formula will be same bd cube by 12 plus 600 into 300 is the area of that flange into uh, 510 minus 150 i will go back to the old diagram see here 510 is this one from the bottom the neutral axis are, is at a depth of 1 uh, sorry 510 510 minus 150 that is the centroid of this element will give you this much value okay uh, so like that we have calculated uh, so the tot, uh, I, INA value is 5.85 into 10 power 10 mm power 4 this is nothing but moment of inertia of the neutral axis for the whole system this is particularly for the centroids but this is for a whole system this is uh, 5.85 into 10 power 10 mm power 4 the next calculation is about zt and zb you all know as we have different uh, zt and zb value that is uh, so we should calculate separately that is zt separately and zb separately this is nothing but um, section modulus uh, z stand for section modulus section modulus at top formula is ina by yt at bottom the formula is ina by yd so we know ina value we know yt value so substituted for zt we will get 84.72 into 10 power 6 mm cube okay let me correct this also hmm. now it's correct see uh, for zt it is 84.72 into 10 power 6 mm cube for zb it is 114.71 into 10 power 6 mm cube so be careful while substituting it should be zt for the top uh, it is sorry uh, yt for the top and yb for the bottom uh, next comes eccentricity of cable eccentricity of cable is e equal to 510 minus 150 that is e value is 360 mm uh, how to get that um, 360 is yes. already in question itself they have given um, this cable is yes. see here read out this this cable is placed at a distance of 150 from the soffit so exactly at the center uh, from the bottom the value is 150 so this is 510 510 minus 150 will give you the value of e that is eccentricity of cable that is exactly from the center of this cable to the neutral axis that is eccentricity we got the value as 360 mm next is dead load of beam see the notation i have used as w g equal to area into density area is total area of the beam we know that it is 450 into uh, um, 10 cube yeah it is in mm square i am just converting that into meter 
so divided by 10 cube whole, uh, 10 cube whole square into density is 24 kilo newton per meter so therefore the dead load of the beam is 10.8 kilo newton per meter um, the next one is moment at mid span that is nothing but for a simply supported beam carrying a udl for this one for a simply supported beam carrying a udl bending moment at the center formula is wl square by 8 as we are dealing with the dead load i have just using i am just using a notation as m g and w g but the standard formula for a simply supported beam carrying a udl is wl square by 8 uh, so uh, for substitution you should use wg value into length of the beam is 15 square sorry 15 uh, the, the l square is 15 square by 8 will give you 303.75 kilo newton meter as a bending moment or moment at the mid span uh, next comes the calculation uh, the f first calculation is see observe here in question itself they have given the compressive stress at the top is 15 mpa um, mpa is also a newton per mm square and the imp very very important is they have clearly given the loss is 15 percent how to calculate this loss is 15 by 100 you will get 10 oh, sorry 0.15 so 1 minus 0 0.15 is 0 0.85 in uh, like in this formula everywhere for p um, along with the p you should use 0.85 this is important please remember this if you forget substituting 0.85 then your problem is wrong okay uh, so f superior standard formula we know that is p by a minus p e by z t as i am dealing with the top layer i am using a notation as z t please be careful it's f superior so it is top layer so it is z t plus m q uh, sorry m g by z t plus m q by z t equal to 15 m uh, 15 newton per mm square um, f superior value they have given so substitute it and write it using this formula we should find out what should be the like what is the moment of the live load we know how much is mg that is from the dead load of the beam we have calculated this mg but we don't know how much is mq that is moment due to live load using this formula we should find out that so i have observed here uh, this is important i have uh, clearly mentioned you should use 0.85 because of 15 percent loss okay so like that um, it is 0.85 p by a minus 0.85 p e by z t plus m g by z t plus m q by z t equal to 15 newton per mm square i know all the values p value i know uh, e value also i know m g i know but the unknown is m q so keep it as it is and substitute all the values you will get the final answer as m q equal to 1169.22 kilo newton meter this is moment due to live load the an important point is see uh, we should find out mq for both the cases moment due to live load we should find out by using both compression st compressive stress as well as tensile stress so by using compressive stress value i have calculated i have got mq value so next let's uh, go and check for a tensile stress value so this is a second point first point is over so second point is the in tensile uh, like they have clearly given tensile stress is 1 mpa but uh, we know uh, where is um, tensile stress it is at the bottom so 
I am using the notation as as f inferior equal to minus MPA. This is very very important. Why did I use this minus? As this is a tensile stress, I am using minus one MPA. In PSC, you should remember for a tensile stress we always denoted by negative for a compressive we denoted by positive so it is minus 1 mpa i have same thing again you should consider a loss so 0.85 and this is a standard formula for f inferior copy this um, equal to 1 new uh, 1 um, sorry minus 1 newton per mm square these things are square sorry uh, in previous page yeah in previous sheet uh, sorry slide it is correct okay now um, i have substituted all the values except m q and this is important it is minus 1 so when we substitute this we will get mq value as 534.86 kilonewton meter and uh, here uh, you should keep one more thing in mind see as i told if we go back to the first condition it's a compressive stress value compressive stress they have given some value for this value we got mq mq has this much next is a tensile value for a tensile stress, it is minus 1 MPA. Uh, the MQ value is this much. In between these two values, this is that is this MQ and this MQ, we should take a least MQ value. That is least uh, moment due to live load. So, um, between first case and the second case, in the second case, we got a less value so consider this mq value right um, take that value and using this we should calculate wq that is load uh, that is live load value we already know the standard formula as m equal to wl square by 8 bending moment due to uh, sorry simply supported beam carrying a udl the bending moment at the center value is or formula is m equal to wl square by 8 as we are dealing with a live load i am just using a notation as q here as well as q here so using this formula if we find out how much is wq it is uh, see the substitution it is 8 into 534.86 whole divided by l square is nothing but 15 square equal to 19 kilo newton per meter this is what they have asked you in the question that is how much will be the udl value acting on a simply supported beam so wq value is 19 kilo newton per meter and while using the uh, units please be careful this is a udl load so for a UDL always you should use a unit as kilo newton per meter. If it's a moment we should use it as kilo newton meter. Okay. Uh, so like that we got a WQ value. This is end of this problem. Thank you.